Good morning. It is now September 1st, 2023, and we are still in uh, Milwaukee, the Wisconsin State Fair RV Park. And uh, we've actually been here since May 1st. This has been an eventful summer for me. Um, life events happening. My daughter had another baby, so I've now got a granddaughter. That's why we've been here all this time. So I would love to show you my uh, new granddaughter, my grandson, but my daughter said, uh, no, she doesn't want her kids on YouTube. I get it. So we haven't been moving at all, but um, Mark's been really busy. So he put out a few videos while I've been just enjoying my family, going up to visit my mom and sister, and um, just kind of enjoying family time while we're here. So Mark's been kind of carrying the heavy load this summer, um, recording and editing videos. <clears throat> he put out a lot of really good ones. He did one on cargo carrying capacity. That was uh, really informative. He also did a ficti fictional comparison to, um, we bought our RV used. So he was comparing what would it have been like if we would have bought new in the past six years of us being full time. That was an eye opener. And the most popular video he did was the cost of full time RV. We took the last five years of all our expenses. He added them up. So if you're thinking of RVing full time, um, you want to check this one out for sure. It is the most popular video so far. So now I'm back on board editing. And because we've been sitting still all summer, just family things, um, I had to dig in to see what did we not edit yet. About a year ago, we were on this awesome caravan. It was the grand circle of the national parks down around Utah and Colorado, New Mexico. Check out those videos. We did about seven of them. That was awesome. Just want to take a little moment right now and stop and point out a couple things. We get a lot of times people asking, how can I find that one episode? Because YouTube doesn't always show the episode number. So I want to tell you how we do that. Um, first, you want to go to our uh, YouTube homepage. And one change I want to point out, look at here is our Amazon link now that used to be up in the corner over here. They moved it, so uh, if you're an Amazon shopper, we appreciate your support. All right, moving on. So first thing you want to go to the playlist right here. Click on that, and if you scroll through, you can see we've got all kinds of different categories. And down here next to Indiana is our chronological all episodes, and you can view the full playlist. So we're going to click on that. And you can see everything from one up until where we are today is listed here. So if we say, uh, check us out on this video, episode, blah, 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 you can go over here and scroll through and you can see how fast it is to get through from zero to 279. So that makes it easy. You can see the episode, you can click from here. One thing I wanna point out, look how easy it is to get back here. If you haven't been following us for a while, we do have, uh, in the early days, a couple just for fun videos. And uh, I always say, this is my favorite one. 17. Shopping the RV Mall. Dumpster diving. Check that one out, too. All right. So that's an easy way to find uh, the episode numbers and uh, all of our videos. Getting back to the show. Well, we went on about three different train excursions on that tour. And after that, we drove up to Shama, New Mexico, and we got on the Cumbres and Toltec scenic train ride over in Shama, New Mexico. But because we did so many different trains on the tour, we thought, well, we're not going to throw out another train ride. We'll just hang on to that for a while. Well, it's time to take it out. So we drove up to Shaman, New Mexico, and we got on the Combres and Toltec Scenic Railroad. It's the most authentic steam-operated railroad in existence today. And it runs from Shaman, New Mexico to Antonito, Colorado. One of the main reasons we decided we wanted to do this was because it was voted by the USA Today as the number one scenic train ride by the readers of the USA Today. And not only was it voted in 2017, it was voted in 2019 and 2020. So with that kind of rating, we thought we had to go. This is what the video is all about. We're going to take you over to the uh, Cumbres and Toltec Scenic Railroad. 
And if you stay until the end of the video, Mark's going to jump in and give you a little update on what's coming up after we leave Milwaukee area in a couple weeks. So stay till the end and I hope you enjoy this video. We are at Combres and Toltec Scenic Railroad in Shama, New Mexico. We'll be on engine 488, which is one of the four operating narrow gauge steam locomotives, all coal burning. They also have one that was converted to oil. Wow, that's real coal. Wow. That is the real McCoy right there. Wow. We stayed at the Sky Mountain Resort RV Park in Shama, New Mexico, and it's only three miles from the train station. If you know what day you'd like to go, we suggest getting your tickets online before they sell out. We decided to go with the most expensive parlor car, which is adult only, 21 and over. We thought, why not splurge? We're never going to do this again. So we reserved our tickets online and our seat selections. Reserving your seat selections is really important, and then we just needed to check in. There are different ways to experience this scenic route. We did the full excursion and started in Shama, which took us to Antonita, Colorado. And then we had a one-hour bus ride back to Shama. Or you could bus up to Antonita and train ride back to Shama. Another experience is the half trips, which starts in Shama or Antonito and go to the midpoint at Scenic Osir Station, where a hot lunch is included, and then you head back to the origin of where you started. Right, so we have wristbands that we need to put on. All right, uh, I like it straight. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised. The folks we're tra traveling with, Tim and Ann, are both mechanical engineers, and we, we all know how smart they are. Uh, <laughs> we were re uh, recounting on the way over here how many different times we're skipping between New Mexico and Arizona. Colorado. Oh, Colorado. Colorado. Okay, this engineer needs to do some Geography. Learning. Yeah, Colorado and New Mexico. Look at that map and look at the Colorado, New Mexico line and look at how many times we skip back and forth it and especially way over to the right where Bighorn is. Look at blank, 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 blank. <laughs> oh my God. They said we uh, go back and forth 11 times over the border. Yeah. So this is the train dispatcher's office. He's in there dispatching. Yeah, I might need something here. This is the real thing. Check out the floor. It's creaking and everything. So here is the end of the train and we're in um, car A. So we've got an open car right here which we'll definitely be spending time on. And then the car in front of it is car A. Why did I know you were in there? Well, dude, I'm gonna have to go to the front of the train. <laughs> you think? I just got a phone call. They need some help with some of the equipment. Mm. I'm gonna do some diagnostics on the uh, kinematic linkage for the front wheels. I'll be right back. All right. Good this morning. is our seed, 17, 18, 19, 20. Wow, Marco. You're going to love it. Yeah. yeah. And as Mark was uh, researching, best side to be sitting on, and they always said the right side. Yeah. We are on the right side. Yes. Which is the correct side. But, you know, when you book with the Borgans, yeah. <laughs> we call it BWB. <laughs> you get the best. Nice little bonus being on this car. We've got this. It's actually a backpack oh. or a bag with a handle. Yes. Nice big we pack. We got a coffee, cold water mug. Oh, nice. Isn't that great? And we're ready to eat, too. Look at that. The parlor car has personal attendants that serve a continental breakfast. You can also enjoy coffee, hot chocolate, sodas, and juices complimentary throughout the day. 
So pro tip on the Combres Coltrek train, whatever, okay, when you're on this train, we're facing the sun right now and it's 4,000 degrees right here, but you'll notice that you can put your little treat that you're given right on the side here to shade it. And I learned this from Paul. Paul even has additional shading with his with his complimentary uh, cup here. So we're good. And we're now leaving the station at 11 a.m. <laughs> the normal viewing platform is right here. We're carrying a caboose and an open car back to Escondido with us today. If you guys would like to go out in that open car, that's your private open car for the day. Wow. Yay! Thank you. And having this private gondola for our car was just dumb luck because they were towing it back to Antonito. It usually isn't the case. You can see how crowded the one gondola car typically is for this train. We definitely got our money's worth on this bonus. All season long, the Cumbres Toltec exercise caution and operates vigorous fire safety measures. Each departing train is followed by a fire patrol motor car that carries a water tank and fire pump and tails the train the entire length of its journey, putting out any embers from the coal fire. You can see we're slowing down because two engines are needed for the 4% grade that reaches a height of 10,015 feet through the Combres Pass. So it's at this time we pick up the second engine. Notice only one can be on the bridge at a time, which is why they're hooking up after the trestle. Right. Is that something? That is engineering, man. <laughs> Oh, I love that sound. That reminds me of the Dutch Star. Going up some of the mountain passes we've been going on. We're not chugging away 29 miles an hour up the hill. The Cumbres Taltec Scenic Railroad was voted number one scenic train by USA Today 10 Best Readers in 2017, 2019, and 2020. It travels 64 miles between Shaman, New Mexico, and Antonito, Colorado. And as I said previously, it crosses the borders of Colorado and New Mexico 11 times as it chugs its way up and over the 10,015 high Combres Pass. It is the highest mountain pass reached by rail in the United States. The Combres and Toltec Scenic Railroad was originally part of the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad's narrow gauge network. Then, in 1970, the line has been jointly owned by the states of Colorado and New Mexico. At the top of the Combres Pass is the historic Combres Section House, which is one of its original buildings that remains along the route. Yeah, well, it's back in the day, it's the equivalent of the uh, Easy Tire TPMS that we have on our... Hey, here's a good shot of the fire. Uh, oh, yeah. So spear. checking our tires and here's the, what do they call it? This is the fire watch. So this guy back here, he eyeballs to make sure nothing, no cinders or anything. Uh, and if he sees a cell phone, he'll grab it and bring it back. A jacket, a hat. That's Sue and the Chan man. We have our straps. Oop! Oop! Oh, thank God. See? YouTube safety. <laughs>
and here you can see we're leaving the second engine behind. Here's the lonely fire car guy right here. You'll pick your cell phone up too. You know, as long as it's yellow and you can see it. And as you can see, the trees are more sparse and we're following a beautiful stream. And because we're up in elevation, here's a pro tip. At this elevation, it's cold. Ring layers and heavy jackets. It's late September and we're both glad we brought our down jackets. So this is Cascade Creek and we're coming upon the Cascade Trestle. It's 137 feet above the creek and it's actually the highest and longest trestle that we're going across on this ride. 1889. Looks like we're at our halfway mark at the Osier Station. This is where we're going to stop and get off and have some lunch. All right, so we're at our halfway mark. I have to say, I went to scratch my head and I felt like sand was thrown in and that there's so much uh, soot. I rub my face and it's all gritty. And that's because we're blowing off a lot of uh, smoke and I'm picking it up. So I'm gonna exfoliate a little bit before we uh, go to lunch. I know. I eat like this at home. So Paul is right in the middle of a failure that he had where his uh, fan belt broke, his rig overheated, and could have possibly puked out all 11 gallons of antifreeze, and we don't know the trick to be able to get 11 gallons in. So he's been having overheating problems, and he is wisely going to have it towed in, and we'll talk about that later on the channel. But I want to ask Paul, what about the idea that we talked about of just trading that old jalopy in and getting yourself a four travel? What do you think? <laughs> well, I'm thinking about that. Yeah. And that's, that's, in the, that's on the drawing board. It's yes. in the thinking stage. Okay. It hasn't been executed yet. Okay. So if anybody if out do, there... I'll probably be the one that's executed. <laughs> if anybody out there works for four travel, I'm volunteering to be a, 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 a brand ambassador for your company. You set me up, we'll talk a deal, and then I'll start. He'll be my first customer. Okay, the other thing is, and I want your honest opinion, Paul, is did I or did I not actually help? Yes. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> wow, even I'm surprised. Look at these two mechanical engineers setting up the engine. Can't help themselves. Paul decided to join them. And we're back on the train with a new attendant heading on to Antonito, Colorado. And the train that came in from Antonito is heading to Shama. Leaving Osier, the train heads to Toltec Gorge. The rocky gorge plunges 800 feet and the train snakes carefully along a narrow ledge where the view is straight down. You're also going to see two long tunnels that you go through on this stretch. First being rock tunnel and then up ahead there will be the mud tunnel. Right, we're 
going pretty slow, so I'm guessing we're coming up on Mud Tunnel. Oh yeah. 340 feet long. And the leaves are falling. Oh, no, oh I got it, honey. I got it, honey. It won't be long and they'll be on the ground. Well, it's kind of like my hair. <laughs> Ran out of battery, thank God. Pat has an awesome iPhone too, so right. I'm using Pat's. Right. Yeah. Woo. When we read all the reviews, we heard a lot that if you're going to take the train from Shama to um, Antonito, you need to be on the right side of the train. I would agree, the right side has some of the most awesome views. Just inside, and I was told that we're slowing down because there's this uh, pile of rocks. Um, we were just told that if they go too fast through here, the rocks could vibrate and they'll start tumbling down. So we've got to take it, take it slow. Wow. Let's check it out back here. Oh my God, what is Mark doing? Oh, honey. Oh yeah, that uh, blue sky behind you. Looking good. Am I working it? <laughs> yeah, you're working it. Made one stop. This is where they will fill up with water on the way up, but because we're going downhill, we didn't really need water. So here we go. All right, this reminds me that uh, I have to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back soon. And here we are, we're pulling into Antonito. This is the end of our ride. What a great ride it was. So now that our train ride is coming to an end, you can see our buses are here waiting for us. So we'll hop on those and we'll go back to Shama and I think it takes about an hour. I think we'll all be taking naps, my guess. Mark, it's time to get off the train. Nice you guys. Thanks All right. Thank Thank you. You. I wanted to get my extra money's so worth and stay extra long. Wait a minute. Oh, see? Clean it. You're laughing. I can't I'm trust him. I can't me. trust Thank him. Thank you. Yeah. with the free pizza? <laughs> That's that one. Uh, I knew it. All right. Yeah, the bus ride back to Shama was also enjoyable, with our driver guide giving even more info of the Both area. Just agreed it, but their signs really far we back. just finished our uh, bus ride back here to Shama, and we did the um, Combres and Toltec train scenic railroad, and uh, it was outstanding. It and, was outstanding. And if you just noticed, you saw me clear my ears, either that or I was going scuba diving. Uh, the elevation change was so much, even yeah. on the tr on the bus ride back here, that it uh, plugs you up. Yeah. It was a fantastic day. We saw more beautiful scenery than we've seen in at least a week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah at least a week. <laughs> we've done a lot of trains lately, and I have yeah. to say, this is the one. If you want to do one, do this one. Mm -hmm. My suggestion, go from Shama. We did Shama to the um, Oshir, I think it was, is where we stopped for lunch, and then yeah. we went to Antoinette. Do it that way. And one of the things that they actually did suggest, and uh, we read about, is always sit on the right side. If you're going from Shama to Antoinette, that's a full day ride. Yeah. You can go Shama to the Midway and then back. Um, another thing that was put into our attention was if you go from Shama to Antoinette, you're going up a very steep um, 
area and they had two engines that had to pull us up there. Yeah, we lucked out. Yeah, that was really cool. But if you come the other way, they only have one engine, but they said you're gonna smell a lot of brakes. And I so would those say, are a couple things. Sit on the right side. When you're in and you know, it's everybody's got their own budget, but if you can at yeah. all afford it, we were in the highest most level. The, the I parlor think it was car. The parlor car. Yeah. It was so nice and so comfortable, and we really lucked out that they had a dedicated gondola car that just by chance happened to be on the back. So our parlor car had its own gondola car. So yeah, it was, that, it that was, was rare. That doesn't always happen. Yeah. And it was like a little over 200 per person. So you can so see it our, was our ride is waiting here, honey. We better get going. All right. We had a great time. Hope you enjoyed. See you next week. Okay, for the folks that actually stayed to the end of this video, we're gonna show you what we're gonna be doing. So, Sue, if you wanna come over here, we keep talking about how we're gonna be going to Alaska, and directly from here, when we leave, we're gonna be driving to Altoona, Iowa, to Summit Products. And Summit Products is the outfit that makes all of the stainless steel armor panels that go all along almost every OEM coach out there. We're gonna go visit the place. Hopefully we're gonna to get to show you how they're built. Our main thrust when we're there is to show you how to measure your coach because you can order these things and have them shipped to you if you prefer to put them on yourself or you can order them, have them shipped to you and then go in hand to your favorite body shop and have them installed. So we'll cover those things. Right after that, we'll have a couple of campground stops, and then we're gonna go on a Fantasy Tours RV rally that we actually won. Uh, we won that uh, at an R Village rally in 2020. We did not pay for it. Uh, we're gonna have a wonderful time in Pigeon Forge doing all the crazy things, all the different shows, and we're gonna go to Dollywood on top of it. Then after that, we're gonna go to National Indoor RV Center in Atlanta because once again, we're gonna have new tires put on the front. Now, uh, these tires are only two years old, but the tires that used to be here were on my tag. So we're gonna throw the tag tires away. They're six years old. We're gonna take these two year old ones, put them on there, always have the new ones on the front. My particular rig, all of the tires are the same uh, size. So it's pretty handy to do that. So then we're going to a Freightliner owner's chassis rally. That's gonna be uh, probably actually the first rally that we went to uh, with uh, Freightliner chassis rally group. We're gonna to go to Suncoast Windows when we're in Hudson, Florida, have a couple of windows replaced. We're gonna be of course at the Tampa RV show in January, 2024. And we're gonna do a review of the campground, the Margaritaville campground. So why? are we telling you all this? Well, we want you to subscribe, ring the notification bell, and be ready and willing and able to watch all the great content that we have because you don't want to miss anything. And out of all the things you don't want to miss, because the Chan Man is having a little problem with his black and gray and water tank, and it looks like I need a new gray tank. And when they take the gray tank out, which is this one, you have to take the white one out, which is my water tank, to be able to get the gray one out. These tanks were put in in uh, uh, 2013 of July. So I'm thinking the smart money is, I'm gonna rip them all out and have it all replaced. And if I'm still able to RV after paying for that, it's gonna be a freaking miracle. So, if for no other reason than to feel sorry for us, subscribe so we can get close to 100,000. I can get my little plaque on the wall and I can stop RVing and go get a tent. All right, so until then, we'll see you next week. <laughs>